How's it going folks? Welcome back to another Kingdom Under Fire 2 video, where today we'll be diving into one of the recent community updates that they've released in response to everyone's feedback. A good amount of players from the community have taken a break because right now it feels like it's taking a little while for the companies to push this patch that's very needed, but hopefully that'll mean we'll get a big one. And we can only hope in that regard. It starts off with the State of Kingdom Under Fire 2, where they say that after several months of preparation, they finally released Kingdom Under Fire 2 for PC on November 14th for the Gameforge client, and on the 18th of November for Steam. The game did seem to have a rocky start when it first launched to Steam. Review-wise, it was almost immediately shot down into the mixed review section, but over the past couple of weeks, it actually rose to 81%. With a steady amount of about a thousand plus players on the Steam client every day alone, which for an MMO would be on the lower side for sure, but if they're able to keep up with the updates starting with this one, they'll be able to gain players over time as long as the game works out. They continue by saying that over these past few weeks they've been working closely with Blueside to release the first major fixes and content additions by December, and they truly hope that their efforts reflect the love and passion that players put into the game and feedback we provide. The game currently has a lot of things they need to take a closer look at, and they state that topics such as progression and balance will receive more attention in the future to further polish those aspects of the game. The next thing they talk about is the to-do list, which seems very extensive so far but probably won't have everything listed in there in the patch that we're expecting. The topics are listed as the following. First on their to-do list is balancing of the endgame raids and missions, which probably is sorely needed alongside tweaks to the loot system. They go into how they've heard the feedback, that players want the content to be harder and more challenging, and that the general feedback from the community was that in-game raids and missions were fun, but could use a higher degree of difficulty. Also including a statement about the 16-man raid that will be added during December, which already has some difficulty updates implemented into it. Adding on to that, I hope that when the difficulty is increased, it's more of a mechanical based difficulty as opposed to just an elevation of health and defenses. To truly make content more difficult while still making it engaging, I believe you need to give us those mechanics to strategize against. But however they decide to proceed with it, hopefully it works out. The second one consists of general hero and troop balance. Starting right off the bat stating that Spellsword and Berserker are in need of some love which certainly seems accurate, but they also follow that up talking about the Scorpion and Slaughterer troops being quote unquote employee of the month. The majority of players end up using them for content like raids and invasions because of how much they bring to the fight compared to others. Some in the community predict that because of these troops being mentioned here, it could mean that a big nerf is near. And some feel that they were simply addressing that they know these are popular units within the community right now. Either way though, we'll have to see. They say that in terms of balancing, it will be tackled at the same time the difficulty of the raids will be. And after this one, they jumped into the randomness of the in-game rewards, which I've gotta say, they seem to be getting worse and worse by the day. Just yesterday, I had done all my invasions and raids with pug groups, and we were getting like a maximum of three vision stones per run in the actual loot chest. I think I could actually say you might see a purple unit drop once every five days in the groups that I run with. I'm starting to think there's something fishy going on here. Either that, or my Black Desert bad luck with RNG is finally catching up to me, which would make equal amount of sense. They continue on by saying we'll actually be getting some troops added to the cubic shop, which should be interesting to see, and it also means that if you're currently spending all your cubics or most of them on enhancements, it might be time to dial it back just a bit. For the daily limit of instances, they go into the feedback received by their hardcore players, stating that most of the daily content is cleared incredibly fast, and that players hunger for action when they're done. They state that they're closely monitoring the situation and would like to check on how many players reach that limit and how frequently that happens so they can make necessary adjustments. And it's here I'd like to jump in with some honesty and feedback to that feedback. I can understand how somebody who plays this game all day and night would want to continue doing missions and invasions to keep progressing past where they currently are now, but I also think it's safe to say that it's probably better to have too many or more things to do with these limits, rather than have so few things to do with no limits. Because right now, past the fourth or fifth time, or maybe even the first time you do some of these pieces of content, they are no longer the most enjoyable things to do anymore. Especially the crack mission and the defense invasion, probably the two worst out of the bunch. So even though I don't think they would listen to this, I would love to reiterate this again. If Blue Side considers lifting the limit on the content, they should do so while at the same time giving us much more to do. Make those open world zones actually worth going into past level 30. Give us field bosses, give us world bosses, give us dynamic events. We want more engaging missions. Give us some dungeons, give us some bigger and more challenging raids, make the mobs drop more gold, and create some more zones. If they went down that route instead, they might not even need to lift the limits at all. One thing that I talked about on stream the other night in relation to Ascent Infinite Realm was that I love the way they did their dynamic events. 
When they started throughout the day, players anywhere in the world could immediately queue for them and teleport to them along with the rest of the participants. It was awesome. Now for this December update specifically, they do talk about that this community update will be the first content update with major fixes. The first one we can expect is a 16-man raid that's called Mountain of Pain to be added with adjustments in balance that fits with the higher difficulty request. Also getting a new hero mission by the name of Treasure Goblin's Nest that will allow us to get more gold, troop vision stones, and general training stones, which thank hell for that. New troops available from the 16-man raids as well, 5 troops to be made available in the cubic shop, more troops included in the list after that, and a seasonal event for Christmas that is said to feature a limited time event where we may be able to get our hands on these awesome looking Christmas outfits from the old version of the game. We don't know yet if they'll look like this, but I sure hope so. And I also hope that they will include some solo queuing and touch up the PvP in one of these upcoming patches so we can have some real fun while we hope. And of course it'll feature a whole list of bug and issue fixes. And to their credit, it definitely seems like they've taken note to all the community concerns. A lot of people seem to be holding out in the hopes that things work out with these upcoming updates and I can only hope that things work out too. I'm sure that given a few more months or even a year that this game could without a doubt rise up to be a long-standing title on the market but it all depends on how they decide to go about building on that potential. And be sure to check out this community update in your free time because alongside everything we've mentioned it also goes into some great detail about topics that are being monitored currently which will likely be touched on in the future or even further suggestions from the community. And with that I truly hope that no matter what happens for the future of this game that both companies do their best to make the product into something worthwhile because it's the only game on the market right now that meshes all these genres together. And also thank you all very much for watching and I hope you have a good holiday. I'll catch you for the next one and farewell.